Hi, my name is Rick Rennie. I'm with the Historic District Improvement Company. For the last four and a half years, I've been the asset manager for HDIC. It's a lot shorter. Uh, HDIC is wholly owned by the McCune Charitable Foundation in Santa Fe and was created in the year 2000 as what the IRS calls a program-related investment with the ultimate outcome to revitalize downtown. Now, along the way, they invested in this building to house 516 Arts because they believed the role of arts in having a revitalized downtown was critical. And importantly and significantly, the talk tonight is about growing the creative core, not creating the creative core. And we believe, and I'll see if anybody here agrees with me, that under the leadership of Suzanne and her team, 516 has become the foundational component for Albuquerque's creative core. So Suzanne, thank you. And I need to let everybody know that I did not know where this presentation was going to take place tonight. I did not know it was going to be in this room, set in this corner, and you'll understand why I'm saying that in a minute. Um, my project is called The Face of Albuquerque. And it uh, is a collaborative and interactive art project that will engage the Albuquerque community in growing and measuring the creative core. The key engaging component will be a visual representation using one of the oldest forms of human nonverbal communication. <laughs> what could that be? <laughs> uh, on the right up there and all around me, uh, you see a lot of expressions. Those 12 things on the left are the muscles that actually enable us to make those expressions. And they're pretty unique in the body because for the most part, those muscles are only used to show emotion. Few of them have a uh, evolutionary history that, uh, in his book uh, he wrote in the 1800s, Darwin's uh, The Expression of Emotions in Man and Animals, he proposes that on an evolutionary scale, some of these actually were functional. If you go three down from the top on the far left, see that very attractive face the uh, young woman's making? The Exposing of teeth and the wrinkling of the nose, he proposes, was actually very functional in the past and the exposing of teeth was used for biting. The wrinkling of the nose was used to reduce the inhalation of foul odors after you bit whatever it was you were going to bite. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the trait remained because it had communicative value. So today, Facial expressions are how we show, the external expression is how we show internal states. Now, although we all have those muscles, we can't all use them equally without training. How many people here can raise one eyebrow? My dad did it a lot with me, but I could never even make myself do it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, if you, can, you can train yourself, and the two best examples I know of this are uh, Jim Carrey and Jerry Lewis. Does everybody here know who Jerry Lewis is? <laughs> I mentioned Broken Record the other day, and I'm talking, a young woman asked me what it was, and I was like, oh my God, I'm getting old. Duchesne was a French neurologist, and after looking into this, I think he was also a sadist. But he lived in the 1850s, and using his patients as subjects in electrical stimulation, which some of the pictures shows somebody holding them in the chair, to identify the facial muscles that cause, cause all these different expressions. So you can see in some of these, uh, like I said, I think he may have had a statistic uh, tendency. But the work that he did has been built upon ever since then. And even today, the studies that are done in identifying muscles pretty much come off of these studies. That work also led him to come to the conclusion that some of the muscles, are, are expressions are caused by the soul and cannot be controlled. And the key one of those he indicated was the crow's feet around your eye when you go into a true smile. Now, I think Jim Carrey may have proven that you can manipulate that, but for the most part, uh, it's a very difficult one to do by moving your muscles around. And bottom line is whether you manipulate it or not, facial expressions are a powerful and easily understood expression of our internal state. So with that in mind, what if Albuquerque had a face? Or what if we could build a face that became the face of Albuquerque? Now, 
What you see here is a face that was built by Christian Risto. Christian, you didn't make it here, did you, tonight? I don't see him anywhere. Uh, Christian lives in Taos, New Mexico, and he built this face because he was intrigued by the whole concept of 12 muscles with the only thing they could do is show expression. And he's used very thin metal strips to mimic our skin, and there are 12 servo motors that control each one of those muscles depicted in the earlier side. So not only can we build a face for Albuquerque, we can build one that shows emotion. The existing structure, if you look in that middle picture, you see some people standing around? It is manually controlled. Each of the muscles or servo motors is manually controlled by a stand uh, separated about a 30 feet away in a semicircle, and no person can operate two. So as he has used this throughout the country at Burning Man and in other exhibits, 12 people stand up there, and typically they get up there and monkey with the face and make it do crazy stuff. And somebody goes alpha, says, let's make it laugh or let's make it cry. And then they start working together to get the face to do different things. And it's really fascinating to watch it in motion. The Albuquerque model is going to be specifically built to be outdoors, when my choice would be Civic Plaza. Uh, the Millennial <coughs> Park's got their team, we, we can have our face. Uh, in addition to the manual joysticks, there will be software that can receive inputs from apps, from devices that utilize facial recognition and motion detection. So you can imagine walking by and looking into a screen and making faces and have it come up. Um, this thing's 12 feet tall, it would be far enough off the ground so it couldn't be messed with too much. The first app that I would suggest we write and in working on do so collaborative would be growing the Creative Core app. So if you can define it, you can grow it. If you can grow it, you can measure it. And if you can measure it, you can show your success. So what we need to create that app is a, we need to comprehensively define the Albuquerque Creative Core and develop a strategy to grow it. So implicit in that strategy will be sufficient, meaningful metrics to drive the 12 motors. We can then periodically create the appropriate expression for our reaction to the progress that we've made on whatever it is that we've programmed it to read. I was a contractor for years and my experience is if there's not a blueprint and there's not a deadline, nothing gets done. And really what we're talking about here is creating a blueprint for how all the components of growing the creative core. What does it mean to grow the creative, the creative core? What are the components that have to be there for it to grow? What are the successes the community will realize, the benefits from each stage of that? How can you translate those into movements on each of those 12 servo motors that creates the expression that we want? So at the end of the month, if you get a frown, you know, it's completely transparent. And the potential for that to go beyond growing the creative core, but any program the city's now got underway, I think it's really exciting and amazing. Uh, so, will you help make Albuquerque smile? Yes. <laughs> uh,